Okay guys, so this is the um, this is the tour of the inside of the of the motorhome. This is from the back looking forward obviously, uh, the cab area. And as you can see there's uh, there's two swivel seats here. They're quite comfortable. Leathered up, lovely. Um, it's a 2.8 uh, injection Fiat engine with a five speed manual gearbox. Uh, it's done 38,000. Um, it's um, it's got cab air conditioning, so that's quite nice. Uh, reversing camera, um, dash cam, two sat navs. The reason there's two sat navs there is that uh, one is uh, for a height, and the TomTom -tom just gives me guidance. But uh, the one in the centre screen there, that's the one I use in case there's low bridges or whatever you know hazards so and the tom tom i've got doesn't do that so but the tom tom i find is better guidance so anyway i use two the mixture of the two so that's our cab area uh, swinging round that's our dinette uh, that dinette actually um that table goes down in the center there and you can make that into a double bed there so it's quite handy uh, looking back we've got a fridge here that's a three-way fridge I'll come to the bathroom in a minute the bathrooms on the right hand side here there's a wardrobe here sorry about the darkness guys it's uh, it's absolutely tipping it down outside and um, the lights not good uh, that's a double bed at the back here it's made up all the time and that's that's very handy when we stop you can just crash out in there so very nice um, swinging back round the uh, above the cab here you have another double bed that's made up the whole time it's a bit squeaky but I'll just bring it down for you. There you go. So, once again, you just bring that down and crash. No having to make the beds up and all that business. It's uh, really, really a handy system. Um, now coming to the gadgets. There's a induction hob that I've got there. There's an oven down there, gas oven. Um, inside this cabinet here, this is where I keep our electric kettle and our toaster. And just behind that cushion there, strapped up, is a TV. We, uh, we don't actually use the TV, we use it just for DVDs. Uh, plenty of cupboard space, really. There's a microwave up here. Um, cutlery, uh, sorry, uh, crockery up there. And then various cupboards here. Cutlery drawer. Odds and sods door. I've got one of them. Uh, the bin and uh, cupboards. There's a slide out there for bits and pieces, especially the bottle of gin. Um, trauma gas central heating underneath the fridge over there uh, for the water as well. Um, the bathroom. Okay guys, so there's the bathroom. And uh, up there, we've got our shower. Um, a handy little storage thing here. It keeps our shower stuff in and a couple of sponges. Um, little basin there. Uh, and the loo. A nice tail rack. A couple of cupboards either side. And uh, a bit of storage underneath. So yeah, that's more than adequate for, for 
brass too. Um, got more cupboard space up the top there above the dining table. And there is actual storage underneath this this bench seat here. And this bench seat here is where the the heart of the operation is that keeps it all running. So just give me two seconds and I'll dismantle that and I'll show you what's in there. Okay, so I've removed the, uh, the seats out of there. And uh, as I say, this is where the heart of the operation is. So if we lift this up, you'll see that under there, there's a inverter over the back there. That's for the air conditioning. Uh, there's another inverter next to there, which is a 3,500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And just there you have a um, 120 amp lead acid battery. Um, obviously, what I've got in here, there is no way that that lead acid battery could uh, could handle what I try and do off grid. So I'll try and explain to you how the system works. If I take this cover up here, you'll see that underneath there, there's 200 watt lithium batteries. good thing about lithium batteries as you know probably is that you can more or less use all the capacity of them whereas this lead acid battery here although it's 120 amp it's only good for about 60 so so the uh, and also that the other problem with the lead acid is once you start drawing current the voltage drops so you, you do get a, a big problem there if you're trying to run anything heavy and um, whereas with the um, the lithium batteries they do tend to hold their voltage all the way down to the last about five ten percent um so leah let me explain to you how the system works so so basically if we was uh, going along merrily and decided to stop for the night with no hookup power okay so what i normally do is when we're when we're driving i'm just running on that lead acid battery um, just as normal um, just an, as, as most motorhomes do um, just with a lead acid battery and if you stop you can just use your 12 volt unless you go onto a site when you can push your mains in and obviously then you can use your 2, two volt power um, what I've designed is a system where when I stop regardless of where I am if I haven't got um, the 2 volt power I can use the inverter and generate my own power out of them uh, 2 volt power out of those lithium batteries and what I've got is a switch over here so so basically this switch down the bottom here that says drive in there so I would drive on the lead acid battery position as soon as we stop I would switch it over to the what I call the camping position and the camping position is my lithium batteries so once I've stopped and decided that yeah we're going to start running some power I would switch that uh, switch over like I've just done I would come under here I would go to the RCD box and switch to inverter power we're not on mains at the moment we're on nothing so as you can see it says mains power or inverter power so I now switch it to inverter power which means that once I turn the inverter on it's wired in a, such a way that it's going to um, juice up all my two forty volt sockets. The one thing you have to remember is that you don't want to be ch charging at the same time. So you switch your charger off like so. Because as soon as I turn that inverter on, the system here thinks that we're on hookup. 
so immediately it would fire the charger up well I don't want to take energy out of my lithium batteries by using the charger so yeah so we do that I then turn the inverter on like so so switch down there the inverter is now ready okay so, so we're now in a situation where it would just be exactly the same as if we was on hook up as if we was on a, a campsite where we've put the electricity into the van and um, we've got all our sockets livened up so we've we've done that with our inverter so all our sockets are now live which means that I should be able to use the induction hob like so you just see that fire up and the microwave as well and you can see the microwaves are light so also what we've got in here is a lithium battery monitoring system that's this little gadget here and if I go through scroll through you can see that it's on 99.8 percent at the moment so what we'll do is we'll do a little demonstration we'll get a cup of water find a cup we'll get a bowl of water and we'll put it in the microwave for a minute and just bear in mind guys that all this is coming off of our lithium batteries we'll go for a minute and away it goes now as that's far enough I'll show you what it's doing to our battery it's drawing one 1300 1, watts at the moment and I'll show you the battery percentage it's going down to 99.3 Two, and so on one I'll show you at the end of it it's coming up now to the last minute should hear it beep any second there you go you hear that beeping that's the um, that's a minute in the microwave of the um, of the water so we'll just open that up make sure it's not too hot there we go okay so a minute in the microwave and our battery still is at 98.8 percent so we didn't take much there bear in mind it was only a minute um, just to give you a demonstration of other things we can do We'll, um, we'll use our induction hob now so I'll put some water in there and we'll fire up our induction hob just bear with me guys because we're on a slope here so you can probably hear that far and away we're boiling up that water now and we can take that up a bit to 1800 sorry about the slide we, we are literally on a hill here so let's put the toast there that should stop it okay so back to our battery monitor 97 97.8 so we've, we've not used 2% of the battery yet so there's our water boiling away in our induction hob there so we shut that off um, 
The other thing we'll do is we'll boil up a bit of water in the kettle. Now, I'm not trying to show off here, all I'm trying to do is show you what's possible with, uh, with this system. Okay, so I've put some water in the kettle and uh, let's go. And there's our electric kettle going now. And our battery monitor. Still showing 97.3. These kettles do take a long time, these low power kettles, so so basically I was just trying to show you there that uh, once again we have got the capability to use an electric kettle off a of grid as well. The other thing we can do is um, fire up our toaster. Okay, so we've got our electric kettle and our electric toaster both working at the same time and we'll see what we're drawing. We're drawing 1490 watts, so basically 1500 watts with those two running at the same time. And there is a system here where if you do over you know, if I go over about two, 2,000 watts, you will uh, get a beep and it will tell you to switch something off. So yeah, our toaster's working quite well. Our kettle now is starting to boil. So we've got a boiling kettle, a nice bit of toast. We've had the microwave going for a minute. And um, we are showing 95.4%. So basically we've used around about 4% of our power. By the time that's finished boiling and the time that toast is done, we'll probably be down to about 94%. So probably 5% of our um, power, and we've made a meal really. Uh, we've had, you know, maybe beans on toast, a cup of tea, whatever. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a great little system. Uh, the kettle's just about to boil now. Okay, we'll switch that off. Boiling kettle. Get that off. And our toast. Yeah. What I normally do with this toast is I just, oh, it's worked now, it's shrunk. But um, if it doesn't fit, I normally just snip off the crust and uh, put it in sideways to make it easier. So yeah, so that's our toaster. That's our, um, kettle um, what else haven't I showed you the air con we've got air conditioning up there um, it runs on 12 volt as well as 240 volt so we can use that as we're going along if it gets too hot for us works really well I must say though that if you was um, off grid like we are in this situation I'm just demonstrating if you was off grid you wouldn't want want to run that uh, air conditioner for too long because that really is the juice eater that would, that would sap your power so so yeah let's go back to the battery monitor and 94.1% 
So we used probably about 5% I would say of our power. And also what I didn't show you was that uh, there's another switch I've got here which gives me solar power. So if, if I'd have switched that on and it was sunny, which it, it's not at the moment, but if it was, uh, that would be generating a couple of hundred watts of um, power. So we wouldn't have even used 5%. Uh, above the battery monitor there, you've got your, that tells me what um, the situation of the gas bottles outside. Both full and over here I've got the um, it's not switched on at the moment but this is a fridge monitor for the fridge that I've got in the back that tells me the temperature of the fridge in the back there so I'll keep my eye on that to make sure that it's uh, keeping the, the temperature okay so guys I think uh, that really is uh, the tour completed of the inside of the van and as you can see we are we are pretty self-sufficient um, we don't want for much it's a it's a bed and breakfast on wheels if you like so so yeah I'll get back to you in a bit